What's up, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of I'll Call You Right Back podcast with me, your host. My name is Chad Medved. Welcome to the show. Uh, I appreciate you being here. First thing is first. I ain't said it in a minute, but if you haven't yet, please rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. Uh, Instagram, at I'll Call You Right Back. You know that follows go. They, they keep the boy growing. So uh, if you haven't yet, please hit a little, hit that follow button. Uh, but I appreciate everyone listening as usual. Um, this week is a doozy, but before we get to that, uh, some business to take care of. So, uh, in, you know, seasonal fashion with our guest this week, uh, nothing better than a little bit of cookies and milk. Uh, Turner Dairy Farms, is top tier whenever it comes to the milk selection. We all know that. Uh, They release limited edition flavored milks on the regular, uh, drop and fire all year long. And currently we are on brownie batter. Uh, You heard me whenever I said it, brownie batter. It is out now on the shelves at any bodega that carries Turner products. And uh, I would suggest you run on down there and grab one before it is gone. But uh, if you are above the legal drinking age, or if you have a cooler older sibling or family member. Uh, You could also get your hands on a little bit of that hard stuff. Uh, Turner Dairy Farms teamed up with Grist House Brewery again from uh, Millville, uh, and they release uh, the limited edition flavored collaboration Milk Stouts, and uh, currently they are doing uh, Utterly Baked, and it is brownie batter as well. So you already know it's about to be uh, crazy whenever they drop that. Keep an eye out. Follow them at Turner's PGH on Instagram to keep up to date with everything. And you could find Grist House on there as well. But uh, we always appreciate Turner's for keeping the lights on at I'll Call You Right Back Studios. But the reason that everyone is here this week, and I mean, it is a doozy. Um, So I have a little bucket list of legendary interviews, I call them. Rick Seaback is on there, you know, Mikey and Big Bob are on there, you know, a lot of people are on there, and I'm slowly crossing them off, uh, thankfully, um, to everyone that's, you know, keeping the podcast keeping the podcast growing. You know what I mean? I appreciate that. And it is, uh, you know, it's building my resume and uh, it's given me some opportunity to talk to some good people. But this week, I mean, I don't know if it's ever been done. This week, I sit down with the one and only Santa Claus. You already know that Santa Kringle, aka Greg Swick, is a professional Santa Claus who has been doing it for many years now. I mean, off, you know, not professionally, you know, he's been doing this, you know, three and a half decades, which is, you know, longer than I've been alive. And uh, my man has put in some work, and currently he is a professional Santa Claus. So whenever I say professional Santa Claus, I feel like a lot of people think like, oh, a mall Santa Claus. Wrong. He is a, it's a different level. So Greg has built up this, you know, brand Santa Kringle LLC over the past couple years, and it is a virtual Santa visit at the North Pole. And, uh, you know, it's hard to kind of explain and put into words what he does. And I know that I'm not going to do it justice. So first thing I would urge you to do is hop on over to www.santacringlellc.com, Kringle with a K, and uh, check out what Greg does and what he's built over the last few years. So to kind of break it down for you in so many words, he has built a virtual world of the North Pole. And he books virtual meetings with, uh, you know, adults that want to have their kids, you know, that want to give their kids a more intimate experience with Santa Claus. So the way it works, you go on his website, you check out the calendar for scheduling, you pick a day, it uh, has a time slot. Each visit with Santa is around a half an hour. And uh, at the end of the visit, you get to keep this video, which is uh, an awesome bonus for, you know, years down the road, whenever you want to show your kids this. But 
it's you know it's pretty incredible because you book this inner or you book this time slot and a uh, forum or a survey spits out at your email you fill it out with uh, you know some information and you know just about your kid so he could incorporate it into you know the experience you know little Jeffy you know I heard you know Mrs. Smith said you were doing great in English class you know what I mean uh, but you get the gist you know you know what I'm saying but uh, he really has gone above and beyond to create a you know different level experience and uh whatever i approached greg and i was like hey man i would love to talk to someone who you know you know how it says in the santa claus you know you put on the suit you're the big guy i wanted to find the guy who wanted to do that uh because you know i've been doing it for a couple years you know i got my own santa outfit you know i do it for the holidays uh so holler if you need one uh but i am you know, I was just pumped to sit down and kind of talk to him about how he got involved with this, what made him wanted to, you know, pursue something like this. Because as you listen to this interview, it's, I mean, it's kind of in depth what he does. Like he takes classes weekly where, you know, it's a bunch of professional Santa Clauses that, you know, talk over different techniques and how to like prepare for the experience and, you know, kind of how they navigate certain situations, which was one of the cool things that Greg did. So like I said, he wanted to uh, set up a meeting with me just to like, you know, kind of know who I was before he committed to doing an interview. Whenever I like asked him, you know, I want to talk to Santa Claus. He was like, all right, uh, you know, let's line up a time on Zoom so you could kind of see what I do. I connected with him on Zoom and it is a different world. So like it looks like, you know, it's him sitting in front of what looks to be a cozy workshop at the North Pole. And it's very, you know, it's very, very like detailed, you know, it's, it's, it's great quality. And, uh, Greg, so like a little bit of behind the scenes, he has a switchboard to the right and like, he kind of like showed me what he does. So in his house, he built like a green screen, like half of a room where he, you know, could get up and walk around. So if a kid is having an experience with Santa Claus and all of a sudden he goes, Santa, you know, like where are your reindeer? He could hit the switchboard and it could switch into a virtual built world with like, you know, a stable with some reindeers. I get it. It sounds wild and I'm sure it's hard to picture in your head, but I urge you to, you know, check out the interview. It's very great. You know, Greg is a great guy. You know, it's really, you know, you could tell that he really pours his heart and soul into this. And uh, it's great to hear him. You know, it's great to hear how he does it because as kids, you know, the majority of us always had our experience with Santa Claus, whether it be going to Century 3 Mall, sitting on a Santa's lap, being scared out of your mind or being happy. You know, you all had your experience with a mall Santa Claus, but you know, it's a different world. Century 3 Mall ain't even there anymore. You know, virtual Santas is kind of like the new thing and especially in a world of a pandemic. But uh, this is a great episode. You know, it's a really great conversation. I'm very thankful for uh, Greg to sit down and talk to me about what he does and what he has built over the years. Uh, Like Like I said, if you want to check out his work, if you got some rugrats of your own and you want to give them a different level of uh, experience with Santa Claus, uh, I would head on over to www.SantaKringleLLC, Kringle with a K, and you could check out what Greg does uh, and kind of just get a different, you you know, he kind of offers, you know, there's some videos of like what he offers so you can get a, uh, so you could visualize what we're talking about in this episode. But I appreciate everyone listening as usual. Uh, Always, you know, always unfortunate, you know, fortunate. I'm talking, I'm sitting down with Santa Claus, you know, who, who is lucky enough to get to do uh, what I get to do. But uh, I'm happy with this interview. I'm happy with all of you guys. I'm happy that the holidays are coming up. Thank you for listening. Without further ado, episode 186 with Santa Kringle, a.k.a. Greg Swick. I got to use the telephone. Hello? I'll call you right back, podcast. 
And that belt buckle, yeah. he, she was sending me all these Tim Allen belt, belt buckle ideas. Yeah. And she says, are you just going with that? Yeah. Any special reason? It's the she, original one. Well, it's my dad took an eighth inch piece of brass and a file and a hacksaw and, made and carved that. that. So wow. that, I got to look at that again. <laughs> just like When's this, that from? You said 56? Uh, 50, uh, the, the belt buckle he didn't make until probably uh, in maybe 80s or something like that because we re- re- uh, resurrected Santa again. But, um, but anyway, that was some of the things. So my bag was made by him and my uh, sister-in-law who passed away. And she put SC on it, so I don't ever get rid of that bag or replace it. You know how you could tell that that is, uh, you could tell that that's made yeah. and not just something you buy in a store is because it's nice and thick and durable. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the stuff they buy now is just flimsy. You know, I, I bought a, uh, my brother has uh, had a kid. My cousin has had a kid. Everyone's having kids in my family. Okay. It's, uh, and like I was telling you before, Christmas was such like a huge part of like my life. Like my parents was the, uh, my parents' house on Christmas Eve was the headquarters for everyone mm-hmm. since I've been alive. So now that we're all older, I immediately was like, I'm assuming the position of Santa Claus. Like I want, to, I want to embrace it all. Yeah. Like I've done it numerous times and I just love it, you know? Yeah. And uh, me and my wife don't plan on having kids. So it's a good role for me. Right. Uh, but I, I bought one and it's just like, it's really not a good quality at all. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like, you know, lacking, but what do you expect? Got it off Amazon. Yeah. I keep adding to it and, and not as much as I used to. Yeah. But uh, that's uh, one of the things that mean a lot. And then his dad. Yeah. Glasses. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, solid gold. Yeah. Know, wire. And then Marilyn, who's the one who passed away and made my bag, changed the lenses out. It was a prescription. Oh, wow. So so those are the original glasses. For my dad's dad. His, you know, the grand, his yeah. My great grandfather. Wow. That's powerful stuff. Yeah. You're, uh, so your I mean, your whole outfit is definitely, uh, one thing that I notice about Santa Claus is, is there's different kinds. Like everyone yeah. is dressed differently. And, uh, what would you say that yours is kind of uh, directed at? It, it, there's two really, I'm more of a, uh, I wouldn't say classic because when, uh, when uh, Coca Cola uh, came out, their ad, yeah. they they came out without the fur down the front, and they just put the buttons. Oh, really? Yeah, and that and I have the fur down the front, so that's probably the two biggest differences in the states in Canada oh, is wow. either the one with the fur down the trim in the front, or uh, just uh, no fur and and just on your cuffs and on your bottom. Yeah, I don't know if I, uh, you know, I don't, I don't really always notice all the differences, but I definitely could tell that there are uh, different styles of them all. But uh, so, I mean, I, I'm, I'm more than excited to sit down and talk with you, and I appreciate you for taking some time out, no problem, of your big busy schedule, uh, to come over and talk to me. But uh, so, um, can you give people listening, you know, a little bit of a rundown of what you do? Well, um, I'm, I'm a professional Santa Claus, and I use the word professional because I I charge for my services. Yeah. I do a lot of still pro bono stuff, but mainly I uh, develop my character uh, and my visit for Santa uh, to be totally different and unique. Uh, I d- used to be an on-site Santa, and that's all I did. I did elderly homes I, where my dad was at, and uh, and I also did uh, children's hospital. There was a uh, worldwide wrestling event uh, that the wrestlers came for the children, and yeah. they needed a Santa, so I went down there for that. And then I did some family homes, some uh, schools, and those type of things, and just really enjoyed it and kept working on my my uh, business or, or my my portrayal of, yeah. the, of the gentleman. And I want to make sure I respect the Santa. I think every Santa out there who wants to be a Santa, it all starts from the heart. And most of us start doing it for friends, family, maybe not the best outfit we bought somewhere. Yeah, you know, but something. Or somebody handed us, they wear this. Oh, or the fact that, oh, you don't need any padding. That's a nice way of saying maybe we should. Yeah. 
<laughs> lose a couple. <laughs> and then we would put that on and, and we would do the best we could. And uh, a lot of uh, Santa starts off as designer beard Santas. There's a whole uh, generation of, or I guess more marketing around the real bearded Santa. Yeah. And that's what I am now, but I still have uh, two uh, uh, theatrical beards and made two hairs at a time they're not uh they're very pricely now is your is your beard now this is this is new for the this is new for this year i started growing it in april uh mainly because i'm going to be doing one after another presentations uh, remotely and i don't want to have to worry about you know like makeup or or yeah getting it making sure it's aligned yeah, and everything and like those that type of things and the problem with real bearded santas is the the mustache because you might be sweating and that would loosen it or right below the lip yeah and there's a good chance real bearded santas or not a good chance most real bearded santas don't have to worry about yeah they can eat yeah exactly the, the designer guys they're, they're learning how to eat out of a straw or drink things that are give yeah. them their protein that's a shake. good point it that's really, a good point because yeah. like you can't be sipping anything. You got to make sure everything's adjusted yeah. still. And so, so I find originally doing my virtuals with my designer beard, sometimes I would notice looking at myself. I usually look at the camera of the children being on the opposite side of that camera. Yeah. I notice it, the lip is separating. So I'll be like this. So how are you doing? And yeah. <laughs> holding my hand on top of that. Yeah. So, adapting to yeah, it. Yeah. Adapting to it. So I, but anyway, I got into it with family, starting it out, doing it with for my children, taking over for my dad when he did it. And this was something that was always that always went on in your family when you were a kid. Yeah, right. We had a Christmas Eve dinner mm-hmm. where uh, Polish descent, okay. and that dinner is called Valia. Valia. Yeah, there's a there is a a lot of ethnic groups have it. The probably the most famous one you hear a lot about is the. Uh, the Italians have the uh, Feast of Seven Oh, fishes. Seven Fishes, yes. Yeah. Well, uh, Vili is the same way. There's no meat allowed. Oh, and okay. It's, it's all... Uh, fish? There's fish or dough and things like that. So what we moved into that, my dad wanted that event because one of the um, things that you do there is you take uh, the wafer that they have for communion yeah. and you pass that out to everybody and you break off little pieces and wish good health and good fortune or whatever to each individual person. So you come in teams of two, yeah. and then you would wish this and everything. Now, my dad had maybe some things that he wanted to not have in, from his family, you know, that he would thought, let's maybe make this a little bit better. He said, that would be the time that you can tell them and get it off your chest. <laughs> well, think about it. It's Christmas Eve. Yeah. Oh, by the way, you're a real stinker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't really I don't really like you. And yeah. you're handing them a piece of bread to eat, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And and that's not so and and my dad lost his job early on. My mom gave him a year off to just because he always never missed a day of work. Yeah. Well, that was a mistake because he, you know, they say about falling off a horse, you yep. should just get back on it. Yeah, get back on it. Anyway, so he never. So guess what? Everybody was asking him, say, oh, I hope you get a job this year. Yeah. Hope you get a job now. Five boys, one wife, you know, five um, daughter in laws. Yeah. That's 11 people tell him, I hope you get a job. Hope you get. You have, you have four brothers, four brothers. Yes. You come from a, uh, so, so I saw it whenever, uh, now you were adamant about me and you jumping on a zoom call before this, and I didn't understand it until I did. So for people that are listening, uh, the reason that I went on this zoom call is because like you said, you do this remotely and the way that you, you know, provide your services as Santa Claus remotely is very, very upscaled than I've, I've ever seen. Uh, you know, you have a green screen, you have interactive videos, and you have uh, abilities to uh, adapt to any situation that you're put in. You know, I just want to make this clear for people that are listening. You know, so kids, uh, kids ask you, you know, different questions and you have, you know, interactive things in, integrated into your programming to be able to uh, navigate these. Now, obviously, this is a more advanced version, but while you were showing me all this, you showed me home videos of your dad coming in the window at midnight. Now, this was always something that happened? Yes. Uh, when we got a little older, my I guess my oldest brother, Larry, he was probably 
Oh, I was guessing he was probably seven. Yeah. And my uh, next brother, Vince, he was probably six. My mom was having babies every year. Now yeah. Think about that. That's almost insane. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, yeah. And I am I was probably four or five. My birthday is actually this week, November 19th. Oh, so, wow. So anyway, so that was uh, the three people, three little ones in that picture. Yeah. And what they would do, they would put us to bed at 839. Yeah. The house had that glow with the Christmas tree glow and all the I love decorations it. and the smell of my mom have maybe a pie in the oven for tomorrow's dinner and those type of things. And then we would go to bed and then at midnight they would wake us out of a dead sleep because <laughs> we're already excited about Christmas. Oh, yeah. So now we go and they put a little hat on our heads and we come out in our bed clothes and there's uh, my dad who would be coming through the window and we'll be down the hall watching this. And uh, uh, and that was maybe eight feet up. He would climb up and then with a full Jeez. outfit of Santa. And then as he came <laughs> through, he would then put some gifts down there. And then he would wave to us, not really uh, say much of anything. Yeah, It was more waving to the camera, I would think, and yeah. than us. Because it was supposed to be like, we're not supposed to see him. Yeah, And then uh, and nowadays, Santa's, they, they would call that a sneak peek. Sneak and peek. Yeah, and they would have it totally filmed. The children aren't supposed to say anything. This would be hidden, and they see, like, they caught Santa on delivering the gifts. Yeah. So that would happen. And then we would get to be allowed to open one of the gifts. Oh, wow. And have to go back to bed because the next day <laughs> was <torture>. church. <laughs> <laughs> I always had the worst problems falling asleep before Christmas. Yeah. I remember sitting there in bed, you know, I probably had to be like, you know, nine or 10, you know, eight, nine or 10. And I remember sitting there thinking like, I have to fall asleep. I have to fall asleep. The quicker I fall asleep, the quicker I could wake up in the morning. <laughs> and I remember being so excited all the time that, you know, I never, it would always be so hard for me. For, so for me to be asleep, be woken up, be allowed to open a gift and have to go to bed again is torture. Yeah. Um, but that's so cool that like you had that experience because, you know, my parents always went above and beyond and, you know, they would put everything out, decorated. Our house was always decorated. My dad, you know, decorated to the nines and uh, milk and cookies and everything. But, you know, uh, I don't know if I've ever seen any sort of thing like that, but it was always, it was always such a huge thing. So uh, I, I'm curious to know about what age do you think you were whenever you found out that Santa, so to speak, was not real? Uh, well, I'm guessing I probably was... 12 or 13, a late bloomer on that. I was trying to think. Because it was so real, delivered us to us. Yeah. We really believed. Now, some tradition, I married my wife, and and my wife's tradition was Santa put the tree up. Oh, wow. You know, and they had a little bit differently. In other words, they would usher the children to grandma's house, come back late, kind of bypass where the tree would be, and go upstairs. And while they were at grandma's house, Mom and dad, yeah. Debbie's mom and dad, were putting up the tree. Wow. Now, that was even more. Not only does he get around a whole country delivering gifts. He yeah, he's putting- decorating your house, too. <laughs> <laughs> I never heard of that. Yeah, that, and we didn't have that tradition when we had our children. Yeah. But um, so I was a late bloom. I, I believe so much. And I, I, my dad, you know, basically believed that there was no such thing as a bad child. And he was very, very kind to every child in the neighborhood. Yeah. And they mainly, what his skills were was working with his hands. So if a child would, uh, you know, ask questions about something, he built his own home. Oh, yeah. He would he would have them help as much as they can. That's great. And that kind of thing. So uh, I just thought uh, it was, he kind of passed it on that way that it's in your heart. And, uh, and then I uh, resurrected him to do it for our Valia dinner when he made that, a tradition yeah. and we all got married. So it got bigger and bigger. And then as he um, um, couldn't do it as easy, I did some of them. And then I didn't want to be kind of caught. Oh, that's my dad doing it. Yeah. We, my uncle helped the, my brother-in-law, yeah. uh, my, the children's uncle helped me. His name Frank. And he helped one year and just to throw them off a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but they were believers too, for the longest time. And, you know, I was trying to think of when, you know, like when it became, you know, a parent in my mind. And like, it, it's hard for me to, you know, kind of come back to a time. I don't really remember. I remember probably like, you know, nine, 10, 11, somewhere around there it had to be. But, uh, 
I think it I think it might have had to do with the Santa Claus with Tim Allen. Yeah. You know, that was like one of my favorite movies. And I think watching that movie uh, kind of, I, I think, because I was like thinking about this last night and I was, as I was decorating my Christmas tree because I wanted to kind of to unpack, you know, my experience with it all. And I think that I kind of realized it from watching that movie and just like kind of, I don't know, come to the conclusion that it's just more about, you know, what you make of it and what you believe in it. And, uh, and that's always how I found beauty in it it's yeah. because like, I, I know some people, you know, they don't care about this. They don't care about, you know, decorating or things like that. They're obviously on the naughty list. No, I'm just no. kidding. <laughs> uh, but I, you know, I fully embrace all this stuff. We're always Christmas movies, you know, always with, uh, decorations and it's always just been such like a, uh, it's always just been such a, a powerful like vibe in a home, like around the winter time. Like you were saying, there's a glow, yeah. you know, the tree, you, the decorations, like makes Music. me feel warm and cozy. And like, I love that so much. And uh, it was always really, really important. So I think, I think you said you were 30 years old the first time that you played Santa. Yes. I was about 30, 32. I did it for my, my children. Yeah. And then I, um, uh, not until later on, my dad did it for my comp- my um, dealership that I worked at. Yeah, and it, it was, um, and he did a great job, and they loved him. And then I tried to talk my dad into doing it professionally. Yeah, enough so we can the money that we would make on it, we will put right back into the outfit. Yeah, and get a nicer suit. <laughs> well, the thing is, this stuff really adds up. You yeah, know? I bet. And uh, real boots, you know, real leather belt, and all these different things. Yeah, if you want to look legit, like you have, yeah. like the way that you look is way more legit than any other one that I've seen. Yeah, and and so uh, anyway, so I I started doing it myself professionally, probably not until about four or five years. All the rest was pro bono and yeah. for friends. So you started when you were 30 and you started to make this, you know, professionally about five years in. Uh, well, I actually went, I incorporated about two years ago. So oh, okay. that, I went that direction. Yeah. And then I, uh, I had this idea of virtual. Yeah. I had that in, in 2018. Yeah. And I, um, I do a lot of Halloween decorations and there's a company called Atmos FX Atmos, uh, their their little uh, uh, the product that they sell is uh, projector quality uh, images of like uh, Halloween ghost pumpkins. And for instance, you can take three regular pumpkins, set them up, and project onto them. Oh and yeah, they become singing pumpkins. Yeah, and they really look pretty realistic. Now that to me is a child friendly type Halloween yeah. display. So. I got into that. Now they make Christmas stuff too. So I decided You're well, saying you're you're personally decorating for Halloween yeah, a lot. Yeah. And I when that, what time is this? Like, uh, I I decorate probably about a week before Halloween and I take it down the day after. Oh yeah. So yeah, you're yeah. okay, yeah. But I do put I get very little children. When we moved in, we used to get a hundred and some children with my dad. Oh yeah. Our house was way out of the way, but my dad always gave a can of uh pop. Yeah. And people would come for that. Yeah, one of the best gifts yeah. for sure. Yeah. As a kid growing up, a can of pop was a very underrated yeah. gift. Yeah. You would have a million Kit Kats, you were just begging for a Pepsi. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And he would give, and he felt, even though we didn't have a lot of money, but that was very important that you give them the best of things. So oh my God. I, I, I'm adamant about, you know, like I, we just had Halloween here. Okay. Yeah. So the place that I lived before this, I lived on a main road in Ingram. Okay. We were the big, we were the first house after a parade. The first year I was there, I gave out over a thousand pieces of candy. Yeah. I, I am adamant about being someone that gives out candy because whenever I was younger, it meant everything to me. Like going around trick or treating to my right. friends was like one of the best things ever. So I'm I'm out there dressed up, you know, trying to be happy and make kids happy. This place we just moved in, not one trick or treater this year, broke my heart. Yeah, but it's, it's terrible. Well, I only had eight my year. Yeah, the first year I moved in, we were down at the end of the street. There's only three other homes. We're next to a cemetery, so that's already <laughs> a little scary. So you know, uh, I. Uh, I thought, wow, what can I do? So I went and started decorating with all this digital. Yeah, and Atmos now FX, I did about said. 37, 38 people this year. Now that's a big crowd, but some of them came back three times. Not wow. for not for any more candy, but they just came back to see the decoration. Yeah. And uh and I thought that made me feel great. Or oh, they just stand there for a while and yeah. watch it. And I it's hard to find 
child-friendly decoration. I don't want to scare them. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. So the ghost, they do the uh, Abbott and Luke Costello, who's on first. <laughs> yeah. Like, I met a ghost, three ghosts with some <laughs> What's odd on names. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and, that, and it goes back and forth, and it's kind of cute. Yeah. Uh, so I've done that. And then when I seen what Atmos had for the Christmas, I thought, wow, if I would put a screen behind me down in my basement shine the projector through it because you can reverse the projector through the screen and I'll sit in front of the little table and I did this for um, one of my brother's uh, young little grandson. Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, so I delivered that to them and they liked it. But then I found out about a software called OBS, which stands for Online Broadcast Software. And it allowed me to take and build my own scenes yeah. and take it to a next level. And then I did that and I realized I can spend so much more time with the children and they get a complete video of this. Yeah. But when I was doing like, for instance, some of the schools uh, and there are three, 400 children, they're really coming quick. Take a picture next, come quick, take a picture. Yeah. And, and some of them are shy. They're not so sure. Yeah. They're not ready to, to just have a random person be in a random person's face. Like yes. they, they clam up and right. You know, the experience almost does a disservice for them. Well, if they're in their own home, they're yeah. already in their own safety net. Yeah. And if I can come through them, but I realize if they're coming to see me through and expecting to see Santa in the North Pole. Yeah. You need to ask, be able to make it look like it and be able to, you know, oh, where's your reindeer and everything like that. And that was what they asked. I had the elves. I had no reindeer last year. Yeah. So, so uh, you this integrated year. this. So, so I'm just one. I, I know that we're talking about this, but I want to keep people listening up to date on what it is. So OBS, yeah. if you guys are listening and wondering what that is, it's almost like, you know, if you saw Tosh.0 or any sort of like newscaster, you could be sitting there and you could broadcast uh, broadcasting windows like on the top right where you could play video videos and you could, you know, incorporate things that go along with it. So as I'm talking to Greg, whenever I was on Zoom with him, he has a window to the right where he could put business logos, he could put animations, anything like that. And uh, it just makes it a little bit more uh, interactive and a little bit more able to, you know, customize the way you want it to. Like a fire in a fireplace. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. that fire in a fireplace. He has yeah. a wood burner sitting right there. Yeah. Like it, it's incredible. And you hear the sound of the wood crackling in yeah. the fire. And that, to me, makes it look like they're actually visiting the yeah. North Pole. And then so this year, I decided we got to go on a tour. Yeah. Now, I thought, you know, sitting in a chair for four or 500 visits, yeah. it's not as healthy. So I needed, wow, why don't I could stand up? So I had a photography career. I had my own photography business way back when. I had still the light stands and that kind of stuff, and I upgraded to LED lights, and yeah. I realized the trick into lighting chroma key to make it look real, and that gave me the ability to bring reindeer, elves, the toy shop, the halls of letters, uh, all this to the children. Yeah. Now I had to go and make all the scenes, and there's another software out there called uh, Blender.org, and you can 3D model. Yeah. Now it's very daunting when it starts off with this little square kind of hovering in a, <laughs> and you go, that's my model. Yeah. And then you take classes. Thank goodness for YouTube. Yeah. And other artists. And then you can learn off each other. Just like I don't, there's not a week that doesn't go by that I'm not being trained with other Santas. Yeah. Virtually. Yeah. That's what you were saying. So I want you to talk to me about that because I mean, obviously we live in this world that is, you know, it's a blessing and a curse how much we have at our fingertips. Mm -hmm. um, and whenever you said I take classes, I obviously, you know, it didn't surprise me, but it did. <laughs> so it's awesome that you could do that. What I envision is you and a bunch of other guys basically, you know, brainstorming and coming up with different ways to navigate situations and sharing each other's technologies and their and the game that you're working on. You know what I mean? Right. And uh, is is so this might be a dumb question, but you know, does how how much of other countries celebrate Christmas? One hundred and sixty countries. One hundred and sixty celebrate, celebrates Christmas. Wow! And, and out of how many total? You know, uh, how many total countries are there? I don't know how many total. Yeah, I mean, is it like, I mean, is it, do you have any idea of the, is that like 25%, 30% of it all? Uh, it's a very high percentage. Okay. I, I don't know the percentage. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's also the 
the most celebrated uh, holiday around the world. Yeah. And, um, and actually, there's a shortage of Santas this year uh, because the people are, are either want them in, on site or they want them virtually. They want their children to experience that. Yeah. And, and there's only so many Santas. Yeah. And that's another reason why when virtual, I can do maybe 30 a day where I can't possibly go to 30 separate homes or yeah. 30 events Absolutely. in one day. So I could uh, make, uh, uh, you know, make it a little bit more special for them. But you got to you got to start off by you want to do it, you passionate, you, it comes from your heart. Yeah. And then you decide, what do I do when the children ask those tough questions and that? So, so as, as you know, you're growing up as a, you know, regular human being, you're obviously taking inspiration from other, you know, Christmas movies, things that you loved about Christmas. So you have to, you have to build your own character, so to speak. So, what were some of your favorites? Like, like what were some of your favorite movies that you gravitated towards? Like mine, I always came up with was like, whenever I think of Christmas and, and Santa Claus, I think of Tim Allen, exactly. you know, I think of him as of his rendition because you know, that is probably the most of, of what I could understand it as, yeah. you know, and I, and, 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 I, and visually, I think it's the best representation of it all. Right. Right. And, um, and that's a perfect example. That's a that's a designer beard Santa. Yeah. Uh, most of your theatrical bearded Santas, or all the movies, are not real bearded Santas. Uh, the Hallmarks do find a lot of bearded Santas they want, but when they have a fake beard, they want to make it look very fake. Yeah, like yeah. They pull on the strap it. and that kind of thing. But uh, my movies, uh, well, the first one was probably the, the original Miracle of 34th Street. Yeah. Uh, I love that movie. I love the Marino Sullivan, Natalie Wood, John Payne, uh, and Edwin Gwynn. He won an Oscar for that role. Oh, and, really? He got yeah, an Oscar for that? that? Yeah. And that was a really a very special movie. And a, uh, it was like that A Wonderful Life type yeah. idea of a movie. Yeah. Uh, but uh, then they made, they redid it. And uh, I like that version too. Both of them are are um, are are important. Like for instance, uh, the second one, the first one, he sang to a, a a little girl who spoke Dutch, and they thought he wanted to see Santa, but they can't have a conversation. Yeah. But he sang a Dutch song with that child, and then the newer version, they did a little sign language. Oh, you know, that's Merry cool. Merry Christmas. And, yeah. and so we try to learn a little bit of sign language, for, especially for the people, Santas that are on site. Okay, so that was the my movies there. Then Tim Allen, of course. And then uh, then obviously I love the Kurt Russell's the Christmas Chronicle oh, yeah. 1 and Christmas Chronicle 2. I just love him. How yeah. can you not love Kurt Russell? Yeah. And his facial hair. On. Yeah, they his facial it. hair though. You know, you can't beat it. Well, he took a gray beard, and yeah. a gray fur line, a more of a leather look. Yeah. And a lot of our Santa started getting that outfit, you yeah. know, and started putting that together. Uh, it's so like that a was, rustic. Yeah. and But I just love how realistic they made the North Pole. So I took his Hall of Letters idea. Katie came through the magical Christmas bag and ended up down the conveyor of, of presents. And now I'm in... I'm at the North Pole. Yeah. And then she even sees a video <clears throat> that she sent to Santa. And in a video wall, she picked up a remote and clicked it on. I have my own video wall. Yeah. Because children feel they can either write to me, and that's the halls of letters. Yeah. But why not show them with video? Yeah. And, and so I made two giant video walls in my display. And you can only do that in a we'll call it chroma key background for people that don't know what chroma key is. Think about just your weather lady or weather <coughs> gentleman. Yeah. That's what they're working in that environment. Yeah. And so, so for the, uh, he, he showed me, you called it the behind the scenes look of it yeah. all. You know, you could see like his whole basement is, uh, is, is lined with a green screen. So it allows you to like, you're walking around and, and it looks like you're in this, you know, 
the stable of reindeer. You know, it, it doesn't look like, you know, you're not like cut off or anything like that. This is a very like, you know, immersive looking experience. Right. I can pet the reindeer. Yeah. I can interact with the elves. My favorite that you, that you incorporated was like, you know, the little like quips that the reindeer have. Like if you're like, you know, saying dash or I'll get up and he goes, <laughs> and you, and you like, you, you know, you could incorporate like a, ah, oh, come on, come on. And he's just like messing around. Like we got Chad here yeah. and you're sleeping. I know. Yeah. What's the deal? I love, I see, I love little things like that because uh, that's what I feel like, you know, uh, completely like, you know, sets it in stone, you know, them little extras, because if it's just a template that you're following and you can't like stray from that at all, it, it's very loose. It's, it's shallow. But if you can get deep with it and you could like, you know, you know, you're like, oh, that can't be like script, it, like, like. I don't know. Maybe I'm. Maybe that's me meta thinking everything as an adult. But you know, young kids. That it's a whole different level of what you, you do. Gotta have the respect for the young kids. I, I. One of my heroes was Fred Rogers. I'll be honest with you. I didn't watch a lot of them growing up, especially when Sesame Street came around. Yeah. It. it I was more immersed in Sesame Street. The yeah. puppets. The whole thing going on. Yeah. Uh, but I. I became more of a fan of Fred Rogers because the way. He would speak to the children yeah. and make anybody he was talking to the most important thing. So, yes, I've really put enormous amount of time from January 1st of this year to now. I rebuilt everything, and I'm very proud of it. But it, it's when 20 years now, if your child or somebody's child watched this, and now the, the mother and dad digs it up and brings it up and put it on their 70-inch TV, and they're saying, oh, yeah. they are not watching my reindeer. They're not watching the halls of letters. They're watching their little child and how they interacted with me yeah. seeing all this and their expression on that film. Yeah, That's the most important thing. So I make it all about the children, and that's another reason why virtually – you can go way beyond uh, a visit, somebody walking up to you, even if you're doing private homes. Yeah. Because they have only so much time with them. And once you hand the gifts out, you kind of lost the children. They're Absolutely. Done. They're done with Santa. You know? Absolutely. In the malls, once you take the picture, next. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm sure you did your fair share of time in the malls, doing the mall Santa. I never did it. I never. Just, I never really thought that was what I wanted to be, Yeah. that type. I did do things like that for schools. Yeah. Jeanette, uh, I think it's their high school, their high schoolers, gets together and they put build, make a dinner for the community. Oh, and really? And they all come, they dress up as Frosty and Rudolph, and they oh, wear these great. outfits children i mean well we're young adults yeah and they asked me to be the santa and i came to that for three years in a row so that was that type of environment now yeah. there was all the photos was done with their smartphones yeah yeah and so nothing was being charged to them I, but it wasn't a lot of time you could spend with them either you know? i feel like the mall the mall gig has to be you know uh I'm sure it's fulfilling as a Santa, but I feel like it almost has to, you know, be, it has to be hard because you're not getting any sort of like time to interact. You know, obviously if you have a line of a hundred kids, you know, you can't be spending, you know, if you're spending three minutes with them, that's like, you know, that's a good bit of time that adds up and you got to get through all these people. So you got to have like yesterday we went to, uh, we went to somewhere and they had a Santa Claus taking photos with animals and, you know, I was like, that's the best gig you could have because, you know, if the photo is bad, it's not on you. It's the dog looking away. But in a mall, you don't really have, you only have a certain amount of time to, you know, a kid can rattle off a couple things and then you got to get a photo and you got to get going because little Johnny got to come over and get on his. But with what you're doing, it like, you know, since you don't have to keep going everywhere and like, you know, moving around and doing everything, you're kind of just stationed. You're able to give them so much more. You know, and and you were explaining like people will book you uh, through your website, and then it'll spit out a uh, a form that you know the parents would fill out with a little bit of information that you could incorporate into your into your you know your show. Time spent with them, yeah. And I, my wife hates the word production yeah. show. 
So it's my visit with the your child. visit, yeah. yeah. And I and it is uh, in a sense a lot of work that you could call with those other names. But I want to never lose the Fred Rogers approach. Is the visit with the children? I respect that. Yeah. So, uh, but you're right. Uh, some of the Santas that do the pets, they always make sure they have an extra pair of pants, yeah, or a blanket. And, I bet you know those type of things that could happen because a bet. pet could get just as excited as a child. Oh yeah, you know. Uh, so anyway, it was all built that I could actually deliver a better experience for the children. Yeah. And it's on video that they have. And uh, and it, it really has an opening scene, the actual time spent with me. And I didn't want to work for anybody else except myself. Yeah. So if somebody has a little problem coming into the because of technology or they really want to talk about something... I don't have to worry about I got the next one coming up or I, I allow a lot of room yeah. to spend. And it's, it's every bit of 28, 30, 32 minutes. And then I realize how important it is to uh, read stories. Yeah. And, but that takes more time. And only, uh, there's only about a, a child based on their age only has so much a, attention span. So each one of these scenes takes into account that that's their ex- attention span but yeah. when i read the story it's a small story but it's a uh, we all remember this and you just come to life when you hear this once upon a time and yeah. then you're engaged already absolutely and so uh, adults too we call our stories the movies that we watched or yeah. something uh and and anyway uh i incorporate those stories into it yeah i mean uh it, it's uh it's pretty cool because even you know, you have so many different angles you could cover. You got so many, I mean, visually, you know, you got it. So it, so it looks like it it looks like you're, you're not, it looks like you're there. Yeah. You know, anywhere you move, it looks like you're there, whether you're sitting next to the fire reading next to that globe. And, uh, you know, I love the fact that you incorporate, you know, sending the certificates and, you know, you have, you have outs, if anything happens, like, I, I, like, can you explain uh, the, what you do with the certificates and what you do with the white feather? Right. Well, the certificate, I uh, was very, it was very important to me to be able to give, I don't do a naughty list. I do a nice. Yeah. I, I believe every child is, uh, you know, there's, they can always be improved. You know, even adults, there are some things you say, well, that was my finest moment. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So anyway, so I developed this, uh, unique certificate. And when I say unique, I want to make sure it's, it's something that came from me. My, my uh, wax stamp has my logo, my look of it is my logo, the verbiage. Uh, and then I decided, well, why don't we give them to each children? So last year I would mail them out right afterwards. Yeah. And sometimes they didn't get it to four or five days because everybody's mailing things at that time. Absolutely. Of year. So I figured, is there a way to make that a little bit better? So I now, when people would go online and book my services, I tell them what's going on with it. And they can read the, you know, the description, what they're to expect. And then I instantly mail out the certificate there. So I had to double the certificates, but I yeah. mailed it out and I send it to them. So when they get it, it's they get it before the actual event, ah, the visit. Yeah. Now, I even double check with a text to make sure they did get it and they follow the instructions. The idea is the family is to, you know, use that there. Now, when I sign their certificate through the visit, yeah, hold it up to the camera, stamp it with my wax seal, I fold it and now I put it through a magical wormhole. Yeah. So they can get it right away. Yeah. And again, how do you tell a child that you can get around the world and deliver gifts, but you can't get your my certificate to me in real time? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that type of thing. So, and with the help of the parents, the certificate arrives. Yeah. So with that being said, I thought it solved two problems, you know? Now, so anyway, that's the one thing I do there. And then you mentioned about one of my stories, the white feather story. Yeah, I along, love this. Along with the, the certificate, when I mail it to them, I mail a feather from a bird, a white feather. And I also send them a, a thank you card for the uh, the cookie dish. Yeah. So the parents can, you know, break up the cookies a little bit, drink a little bit of the milk, put yeah. the glass down, <laughs> and lay the thank you card. It does two things. It really adds to the lore of Santa. But why don't we... Why, why wouldn't Santa be 
telling you thank, thank you. Thank you for the cookies we and milk. We teach our children. Why can he? Adults are the best way adult can teach a child is that's, by That's example. one thing. That's one thing that, that always kind of passed through because all the kids are sleeping. You know, yeah. if, he, if you if, if you seen him, he would have probably told you thanks. Yeah. But that's so cool. That that's like another little extra well, little bit. And then the idea of the of the... The feather, it goes along with the story. So the feather is on the floor or wherever the Christmas tree event is, underneath the Christmas tree, wherever you want it to be, and it's just laying there. And then the story around, do you want me to tell the story? Yeah. Okay. The story is that you ask the children, um, what do you think the most asked question that I get is Santa? And you wait for their response. They might say, oh, how do you get down uh, the chimney? How do you get, we don't have a chimney. Yeah. How, do you, how do you get around the world? How do you, how's the reindeers fly? Oh, I get those questions. They're all good questions. Yeah. But the most asked question is, Santa, what happens if we catch you? Oh, you mean you catch me on Christmas Eve putting the gifts on? Yeah. Well, what do you think happens? Oh, you take all the gifts away and you just disappear. Oh, that would be rude. Hey, I see you left me some cookies and milk. Oh, do you know where mom, do you know where dad keeps the cookies and the milk? Let's go get some. So I'll go and get the cookies, put them on their plates. I'll take care of pouring the milk. We don't want to spill nothing. We're going to have a cookie and milk party. So we go back in the room and we have all these dishes of, along with my dish you left me and we are having a cooking and milk party as I put out your gifts. And then I reach into my vest and pull out a little feather and I explain the bird that lives in the North Pole and he's a magical bird. And that special gall that lives in the North Pole, those we realize how magical those feathers were. And as I pick up that feather on my jam pocket of my vest, and I, when I drop it, and when it hits the ground, guess what? You're back in bed. You don't remember a thing. And so that's the story. So I deliver that story to them, and I end the, the, the visit with them that way. Now, the parents got that feather. Yeah. So they can now their idea is I give them a whole letter around it so they remember if they have more than one child make sure you put out their plates and yeah. their glasses and their crumbs of their cookies yeah and then the feather on the floor and I even have a picture inside the letter so I tell them you know you can buy a dollar ornament at the local thrift store and put the a clear glass ornament and put the feather in it or plastic and ornament and hang on your tree. So every year as you look in the uh you look up at the uh ornament, you can remember that event. Yeah. And also when I finish the story, I actually show them an example of that a feather in an ornament and and I tell them about another young man that wanted to give me it back after all these years and he lived in Virginia and it was July, so I had time to go visit him. So he wrote me the letter to come. You got to see me. You really do. I went down to see him. His name was George. And George showed me on his dresser this ornament he made, had made with a feather in it. I said, well, you don't have to give it back to me. And he says, oh, I really want to. I want you to give it to another child. It's been so important. So I have it. And I turn the box around where the ornament is sitting in his velvet box. Yeah. And the name inside that box is George Washington. <laughs> so it adds to that. And at the, and there's the little feather that I hang yeah. and show them. And there's the one that he kept for his ornament. So it just adds to that lore. Different of layers. Different layers. And then the parents can always have that ornament with a feather and then the children can remember it. Yeah. Something, it's a leave behind yeah. in a sense. That and it's a good little story that they can pass on and maybe start their own tradition. Absolutely, it's a uh, it's very cool to to incorporate something like that. I, I speaking about traditions. I really believe. At first, when you asked me how I got into this, yeah, I I took a Apple approach, or let's talk about the the gentlemen's and Steve Wojciat and Steve Jobs. Yeah, and and when they were developing this computer and their their vision of it they realized they had to make it as special as possible. 
Mm-hmm. And then when they moved on to the, the the iPhone or the iPod and all these things, something they would want in their pocket and whatever, you know, and the rest is somewhat history. But when I decided to think last January, what can mm-hmm. I make this special? And next time a child asks me, where's your reindeer? I should be able to provide it. Yeah. Uh, I needed to first make this exceptional. Yeah. And I believe everything in my business works from the customer backwards. Simple as that. Yeah. And and so that's what drove me to make this. And I added stories because I got trained by one of the best storytellers in our group, a gentleman named Steve Gillum. And Steve can captivate uh, virtually or on site his uh, the children with stories. And a lot of it is incorporating a visual and also incorporating um, you know, the actual verbiage and again, yeah. what we learned to make it entertaining with your voice. So is that what this is? Is like your classes are, you know, a bunch of you sitting on there trying to brainstorm together oh. on great ways to, to enhance the experience for everything. Sure. We have a magician that taught us how you maybe do use magic. <laughs> I know. I saw you, I saw you use them D lights. Yeah. Uh, I see. I, I think that it's so cool because uh, I love the idea of almost being like a, like a, like, do you know what Dungeons and Dragons is? Mm-hmm. Like a Dungeons and Dragons character where you could add your own stories and you could add your own, you know, spice to, you know, everything that you're trying to do. And it's so fun to be able to do that. Now, I'm curious to know what, what's like, uh, what do you think like the oldest kid is that you usually have? Uh, most of them are their siblings. So in other words, I might have a family that has a three-year-old, a five-year-old, and now there's a 13-year-old. Yeah. Now, the 13-year-old doesn't sit front and center at the camera. They're usually kind of wandering back and forth, and the other two are there. But they allow them to participate in, in this, this magic yeah. experience. And they, and they might even say something if I point out them and that kind of thing. Yeah. But uh, I do get that, or I'll get a child... I had a child last year where they said, uh, uh, here's how I would make toys. Well, I stopped everything. I leaned towards the camera, put my hand underneath my chin, and he went on for about eight minutes of telling me how to make toys. And that sometimes kids just want to listen. You, they just want someone to listen to them. And I said, wow, you know, <laughs> we don't really... We don't really take interviews for uh, elves until they're at least 450 years old. So you do real well in school when you keep working <laughs> on that. Uh, you might become one of our toy makers. But the most important thing out of that, 20 years from now, they're going to be saying, look, listen to him. He's telling Santa how to make toys. Yeah. And and that's important. Yeah. That's it important. Is. It's and, important. Uh, yeah, it is. Would, uh, now, for you to... Uh, incorporate like uh like the feather story and things like that or or, or is that something that like you hear from another santa and 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 that's just like through these classes like do do other santas have like these different versions of their like kind of like the way outs of 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 things like that What, what are some other like uh you know do you ever have any like you know questions that catch you off guard Oh yeah, we take improv classes. Oh yeah, uh, I, I, our group and I would say let's practice our improv. Yeah, and we'll go through a hundred questions. Wow. And and of course, when people think of improv, they think the show that yeah, uh, you know, uh, Jim, or they also think Robin Williams is being one of the best. Yeah. I personally think Jonathan Winters was the best. John John you, Winters, you amazing. You throw him a hat, and he could give you three, four, five characters just around that hat. Improv is improv is one of the most uh, you know under underrated things ever. Whose line is in any way? Yeah. still one of the funniest shows so of all time. We actually practice improv. That's one of our classes we take, and 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 there is all types out. But we also got to. I built all my scenes. And I even licensed Atmos last year. This year, I went with my own stuff. But I built them so they'll be unique. And now I don't have to worry about copyrights. They're all mine. Yeah. And uh, stories or songs or a special reindeer with a special name, he is still considered not public domain. Yeah. So when I talk about that special reindeer, I might never say his name. I let the children say it. Yeah. But I don't say it. Ah. Uh, the night before Christmas is now in the public domain, 
but I present it as not reading that story. Yeah. Uh, because I do want to spend more time with the children. I don't yeah. want to spend too much time with stories. And I start off of how that came about. You know, two years from now, that would be 200 years old. That happened in 1823. Clement Moore, he thinks he was the first guy who caught me delivering gifts. <laughs> oh, he wasn't the first guy. There was a lot of pets and little mice that seen me delivering gifts for years. Yeah. But he was the first one to write about it. And he published it. Yeah. <laughs> and and so I actually have that published copies that he left me on the mantle a year later. He he put them in a nice leather folder for me. Yeah. So I read it from that standpoint. Yeah, and it's like and and you're saying this right now on the podcast, but like as we were as you were telling me this on Zoom, you were showing me that all mm-hmm. this. And uh it's I mean it's incredible to be able to have, you know, just uh uh you know, they say a picture is worth a thousand words, but a video is, you know, yeah. that's you can't get anything better than that. When I talk about that special bird, I have a visual of that bird. Yeah, it's so it's I incredible. can't do that on site. So I'm taking uh, things that I think I make it a little bit different. Yeah. And I'm not so sure. I mean, I'm, don't get me wrong. Seeing a Santa in a mall or a uh, have him come to your house, they're all great events if you can arrange it. Yeah. But there's only sometimes you might not be able to get that. It doesn't line up and may it like it might, uh, might work. It doesn't always work. Right. You know, I uh, like I said, my brother had a, uh, a daughter and last year met Santa Claus and freaked out. And uh, it's, I mean, I feel like it's, I feel like it's more approachable even to do it the first time, you know, like even if you're a young, even if you're someone who has a young child, like, you know, maybe even doing the first time they meet Santa, you know, with you and like, you know, virtually that might even be a greater way to initiate Santa to where they're not scared if they go to a mall the next year. You know what I mean? Because I I mean, I was never scared. I don't think, but even whenever I played Santa Claus, I think I was 14 or 15. I was in boy Scouts because I was a portly young fellow. Uh, they were like, we need a Santa, you know, I'm always down for it. Yeah. So I was, I think I was like 15, maybe 14. And I was playing Santa Claus at the festival of trees in McKeesport, uh, at that, uh, (laughs) And then uh, I did that for a whole weekend, and then for the Christmas party down at uh, uh, what what the what's the place that was down in downtown McKeesport that was like a banquet hall. Uh, what the hell was that? Wherever they had uh, they had a Christmas party there, and I played the Grinch the same weekend. Oh, but uh, you know I was young and I liked doing that. But I remember you know sitting there playing Santa and like all the kids not wanting to like be you know they don't want to be with some random person even if it is santa it's kind of like uneasy but you know do you often have any negative experiences with the virtual i last year i had only a technical experience sometimes your internet will have an issue oh it's a good point yeah and we just made it right uh i always believe you work from the customer backwards if something happens in that case it just was a little glitch for a couple minutes but i offer them to uh just redo it, no charge. Yeah, and and uh, and another day, so they can have two visits, yeah. whatever it is. Or I'll be glad to totally refund something if it didn't. But out of all the my photography business that I got into, and I started out as a young child, I wanted a stereo. Every I guess every child wanted a stereo at yeah. the time, and I I didn't have the money, and so I started making my own wax candles really yeah and i'm molding these candles and my mom's <laughs> you know on a stove top and how, old are, how old are you oh i probably was 13 or 14 i'm going wow. around the neighborhood selling candles wow you know and i also as i got older i joined junior achievement yeah and, and learned that type of stuff but i did that and then when i went to buy the stereo at there's a mckee sport appliance store called keys oh yeah keys uh didn't have the stereo it was never in stock yeah and and then as i'm walking out because i got money in my pocket you know what kids say about money in their pocket burns a hole yeah, that's what your dad would tell you <laughs> and i walked by the cameras and i bought a minolta 101 srt 101 camera and then that got me hooked on photography wow and then i eventually uh took pictures of everything but every time i went and got them developed i realized oh boy 
this cost me money. Yeah. <laughs> so I eventually got into wedding photography and I did many a brides and it was all word of mouth and I learned that skill set. That's that incredible. Everything along my career in life, I've learned things that I can now use in my Santa Claus portrayal, my visits. I used all the equipment. I used the lighting techniques I learned all through those times. Wow. Um, so uh, you just adapt to those things and make it the best you can. But yeah. I would tell parents... If you tell stories or sing a song or play music, and, you know, that's a very special time at, at night. I always said when watching my two young children, they're adults now, when they were, it was about six or seven at night, more like seven, maybe an hour before bedtime, they would be like, like amazing. They would just bring up things and yeah. you sit there and you would just like look at them and go, what? Yeah. I know little children are four or five that know every dinosaur's name. You by you just show them the dinosaur, they yeah. tell you the names. Uh, or they know the, the states of the, in, the, in the United States, uh, the It's capitals, incredible, it is. Or whatever it might be. Uh, and it's just amazing. So I just really believe... Uh, you know what? Have them watch movies and enjoy it with them. You got to stimulate their mind in exactly. different ways. You have we, to be able the 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 thing that makes you a professional is to be able to stimulate uh, these kids' minds in a way that you know w with what you're doing, and that's exactly what you're doing. You, you're you're finding solutions to these uh, to these you know things that you're put up against. You know, how does this happen? You know, where are the reindeer? You know, where are all the letters at? Yeah. It's just a way for you to adapt. Um, I am curious though. So you said you grew up in McKeesport and I knew that McKeesport, downtown McKeesport was, you know, popping back then. Oh. I, and and that's one thing that I always wish that I would have been able to experience was Christmas time during uh, oh. when downtown McKeesport was thriving the way it was. Yep. Now, do you remember that? Obviously, oh, absolutely. The famous was turned into a toy store. Uh, you know, it's, it's like the spirit cart uh, stores that pop up for Halloween. Yeah, but that whole bottom part of the famous, uh, they eventually turned into a discount toy store you could go through there and buy toys yeah. next to it was the Penn McKee Hotel one of the oldest hotel a little bit further down I seen my first wrestling match, wow. match at the Palisades, uh, Palisades. Oh, Palisades that's what Palisades. I was talking about that's where I did the that Palisades. Christmas place and then uh, I see I met George Steele and Jumpin' Johnny DeFazio wow. you know Bruno San Martino Bruno all San those Martino. things and uh and it was just amazing. And then further up the street, there was Cox's, there yeah. was uh, Jason's, there was, Mon I bought my first uh, ring for my wife, from uh, Monroe uh, Jewelers. My uh, my um, wife's uh, grandfather owned Rankin Jewelry. jewelry. Oh, wow. And, yeah, so they were there. And then obviously, remember the fish market there? You get the sandwiches. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I all remember that, that stuff. Sam's hot dogs. Yeah. All right. that. And the Memorial Theater, you know, go down and see the Memorial Theater. I always would see photos of, you know, oftentimes, like, I'll look at photos of that, or like, even I saw a post on Facebook the other day of, uh, Century Three Mall mm -hmm. in its prime whenever it was decorated for Christmas, and that is something that I really remember. Like it, it really pulled me back into you know the nostalgic feels of everything because Christmas time there going into KB. I have chills thinking about it just because of like the feeling of it all. Yeah, and it's so wild to think about that now because I. I loathe going to the mall now. I just went the other day. I had to go get my eyes, done, my yeah. eye exam, and I'm just like, God. The only the good thing about the mall in Christmas time now is just the decorations and all the lights and everything. Yeah. That's what I enjoy. And I I worked at Greengate Mall. Oh yeah, I was one that was. My wife and I had two jobs almost all our lives. Yeah, uh, I, she would either be a she was a school teacher. And it still is. And then uh, we would do the photography business. Now, yeah. taking the picture was the my the easy part. She would actually do those with me. Little children in their baseball and their soccer and yeah. their hockey. Hockey is amazing. You start at 6 a.m. Oh, You're yeah, done by about 8 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> and because that's the only time they can get decent price on ice time. Yeah. So I did Kirk S. Nevin ring. I did Monroeville used to have an, uh, an ice skating ring. I'd photograph oh, yeah. there. I did them amateur penguins oh, at, wow. at the Civic Arena, which was amazing to be there doing that. So the point is, I learned all those skill sets. But uh, when I, uh, one of the jobs I had in between uh, 
um, our shutdown at Volkswagen of America, uh, I went and started working for this company, uh, a, a men's clothing store. Um, Lenny Stahlberg, he's no longer with us, had about four stores inside Greengate Mall. A junior shoe store, the, the pizza store, the pro foot, uh, and then Lenny's uh, men's store. And I uh, was a salesperson there. It was only two of us in the store, maybe three of us. And then Lenny took to me and he t- took me to Monroeville to start being a buyer of clothes and learning that technique and all those type of things. So yeah. How to decorate the windows. I didn't do none of that, but I would watch the gentleman doing that. And all those skill sets along the way. But boy, at Christmas time, you're yeah. right. Greengate Mall was one of the first malls in the country. The Rouse Company started that mall. And uh, the event they put together for that mall it was an absolute unbelievable. I want to just digress a little bit. Yeah. Recently, I'm always on uh, Facebook mainly, mainly to learn that's our way of uh, getting connected to other Santas yeah. all around the world. And uh, so I learned a lot of things, those groups there. And one of them was the Westmoreland Mall had a, 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 a one of the little small stores, hired a Santa from New Jersey. Don't know his name. I doesn't show it. He might be part of our group, but there's so many of us. Yeah. But he showed up and worked that store for, I think, mean, three days. The lines were three hours long. What? Yeah. I'm talking about like now yeah. where, and there's pictures of the lines. There's also photos galore on the Facebook site of this gentleman with these children. Now I never had pictures because they're the, it's the parents children. Yeah. It's not my children. Yeah. I don't have the right to publish their picture. I don't say he did that. I think the parents posted all these pictures. Yeah. Now a lot of my Santas would say, Oh, he looks good, but he's not smiling. He might not have smiled, and I don't know what when they took that picture. Yeah. But the point is, you look at this gentleman's eyes. I I wish I had his. Those eyes just said everything. Like yeah. he cared. Yeah. Uh, unbelievable. Yeah. Santa. I can't even think about like how crazy it would have to be, you know, now because the last couple years, obviously, with you know the COVID and everything like that, people had children and you know they missed that first one or two years of them getting their mall photos and you know that experience telling santa what they want for christmas so they're getting this overrun of like the last couple years plus the new the new crop of children that are coming in now um so it got to be overwhelming but it got to be fun um i went to i think i stopped at uh where were we at we stopped at a mall and there was there was a good there was a good line and it was like right i mean it's just November. It's the middle of November right now. So, yeah. when, I mean, when does that usually start? Uh, it's, of course, retail realize that's the busiest time of their year. Yeah. And we understand that. So, and the whole idea of having a beautiful setup like Greengate Mall did in that, that was to draw people into the stores. Yeah. And so uh, they like to push that season a little bit more. So I think November 10th, 12th yeah. is probably the start now. And it, and uh, and usually it runs up to Christmas uh, Eve or is for the mall Santas, but uh, Cabela's and Bass Pro. There's a lot of them that hired Santas. Uh, there's a group called Hired Santa. They were in Shark Tank. Mitch Allen started that group. I know Mitch personally, um, and they had thirty some Santas on there getting investment. Unreal. And at first, you'd wonder if it was even going to anybody would invest in it, but um, Barbara, it was one of the ones that did take on that. And there's other, the National Santa group. I know them, the person, Gina Bacon, that started that group. And there's Cherry Hill Santa. Yeah. These people have groups and they do a professional job of placing Santas. I just wanted to have a lot more control. Yeah. If they look at my setup, they go, whoa, 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 whoa. You're so different. You got real reindeer. You got real elves. You got this setup. Uh, We just want you to spend time with the children. And we got them every six minutes or every 10 minutes or every 12 minutes or or at the mall. Think about me going to the mall with my belt and my staff. Yeah, uh, you got all kinds of stuff poor, to lug in. Well, not only that. No, what if I got sick? Yeah. Or, and then the next poor Santa doesn't have a staff, yeah. doesn't have that belt. That's a good point. You know, uh, you they were looking for something that is maybe a cookie cutter approach. Yeah. But it's still extremely important that the Santa recognize and respects that position, no yeah. matter what comes at them. Absolutely. I know a young lady named Santa Mel, she goes by. She goes by. Yeah. Melissa. Yeah. I said, Melissa, don't worry about Mel. 
Melissa, yeah. you are a perfect Santa. How many people do you think behind Mickey and Minnie or oh, Mickey yeah. are not young ladies? Yeah, exactly. Embrace the fact that you have the look of a Santa. She's obviously a designer beard Santa. Yeah. But um, I think that's extremely important. That's a good point. I, I never thought about that. In your group that you have of a bunch of people, obviously, on Facebook, you know, what is what do you think the percentage of, of female are? Well, there's a lot of female Mrs. Clauses, and we forget about Mrs. Clauses, yeah. how important they are. Yeah. Uh, that Santa could not even get what he gets done if there wasn't not only the elves, uh, a great partner in life. And and I love what uh, uh, Kirk Russell, the Chronicle movies, brought in yeah. Goldie Hawn and his real partner Who in life. Who doesn't love Goldie Hawn? And, and exactly. Then the second movie was even, uh, you know, using her, her more, especially when they're being a tour in the North Pole. Yeah. And this is Santa Village and Mrs. Claus designed it. And that Katie says, why isn't it called Mrs. Claus's Village? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Goldie Hawn says he never thought of that. That's it. And no, Kurt said he never thought of it. And of course, Goldie Hawn said, of course he never thought of it. Now, do you see, do you see, uh, like, uh, is there just one female Santa Claus that you've seen? That, that I've seen. There yeah. might be more. Again, I joined, I, I attend a worldwide Santa Claus. They do each individual countries. Yeah. Some Santas, they're not, they have a beard almost down to the floor. Wow. That's in those countries. Some of them don't even have, a lady is the, it comes out and tells the story. Oh, and wow. then some, they, 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 their idea of Santa is the three kings. Mm. And all different ways of portraying that now what about uh what about things like krampus uh are you familiar with krampus no krampus is uh wow i would expect of i I would have expected you to be a little bit more familiar because i don't know the whole story of it all but supposedly krampus was uh you know a different version of maybe german like there was the movie it's like a kind of like a horror uh, spin on it all, but I don't think the real story of it all was necessarily meant to be like a horror movie. I just, I think it was meant to be that he, there were bad kids that were, I think it's a way to scare kids into being good. Yeah. Oh, I, I do remember a little bit more about that now that you, I, I kind of pushed it out of my brain because I never went with that direction. Yeah. And at one time you'll see Santa with a stick, like, like, like the, you think of the nun slapping your hands, yeah. you know, not. That's it, part of, that's part of a uh, Krampus. Uh, that's a, uh, uh, they, they highlighted on like the office is the only reason I would yeah. know that. But it, it, there was like uh, good or bad. And one of them got, uh, whacked with a stick if they were bad but yeah now uh so as a santa claus obviously you know you're you're very you know upbeat and you're more on the positive end of it all but you know are you someone that uh kind of indulges into the the horror aspect of it all as far as like you watching movies or anything I like that i did see that movie where they uncovered a, uh, that santa uh, I, I like an archaeological dig and they found him and they they start off by telling this is a very dark portrayal of santa i never really watched the whole thing was it the foreign movie yeah rare exports yeah yeah and and, then, uh, and then the other thing though one of the movies i really like it's called the christmas story and it's uh, i think it's a finnish movie where this how he started out where he was an orphan his parents died uh, taking care of the little daughter to, uh, and the whole family died except for him. He left yeah. at home and they uh, took a shortcut over the lake and it was, they hit a weak spot and they drowned in the lake. Oh, wow. And so he, they never came back and yeah. he, he kept himself busy and trying to keep the food in the house that he had to go. And then he was adopted by the, the house, I mean the, the village and passed around from house to house. Yeah. And eventually they couldn't take him anymore. And he was given to a real cranky gentleman and he taught him how to make toys and became befriended with them, became more ah. than he was told to call him master and not call him by his name. And, yeah. and it, and it become uh, how Santa came about. There's all, ah. you know, obviously the, the religious side of it is he was a, a, a bishop out of a, uh, in Turkey back in the uh, 300 some AD, those type of things. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there's all different stories along that. Yeah. It's, uh, it's crazy how many different, you know, takes on it there are, yeah. but it's also, you know, it's a beautiful thing to be able to like, you know, kind of, uh, 
customize your version of it and and what you want it to be and what you are passionate about and what you feel in your heart. And I take the role of, again, back to a Fred Rogers' approach. Yeah. People don't realize Fred Rogers was an ordained minister. But if you watch all the reruns or anything about him, he never would ever bring that part of it to the children. Yeah. Not that he didn't believe um, in what he was doing and believed in his faith. But there's but a there's, there's a time and place for it all. Set, I don't know what child might be in front of me. Yeah. What religion, what background. I want to realize he's a child or she's a child, and that's where I want to talk to. Yeah. That and that and not I respect the fact that some people associate that with the birth of Christ. I understand that. I I'm I was brought up Catholic. Yeah. But I also realize that you have uh, to be able to accommodate adapt. everyone. Yeah. And and that's uh that's another that's another beautiful thing is to be able to, you know, create your business and what you do to be able to accommodate everyone. You know, I was telling you I great. I met a uh, a gentleman that uh, was somewhat famous, and uh, and I got to spend some time talking to him. And uh, it was Gene Roddenberry, the creator of Star Trek. Yeah. Now looking, this guy's the his idea of his of the world. It was a federation of planets, not the United States, not Canada, not Russia. The federation of planets. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then look at the crew. You had an Asian gentleman. You had a, a lady who was running the communications of a different uh, background. All these different people working together yeah. and, and going where no man has gone before and a and, and peaceful mission. Uh, maybe I just really embraced that Star Trek vision. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, more so than the, than the Star Wars that was more all about battles. I mean, yeah. but, um I just enjoyed that, and uh, so I got to meet Gene Roddenberry, and uh, it was it was uh, I spent some time. I took him to uh, a community college in West Mifflin, and and where he was speaking. So I drove him there and drove him back from there, and got to spend some time with him. I mean, but uh, I I would love to have met Jules Verne or or uh, George Clark. I mean, yeah. you know these different writers, of course, but. Uh, he to me envisioned uh, that envision he had. I, I like that though. Yeah. We're going where going where they've never gone before, but with a a very vast uh, different demographic of people. That's that's pretty cool. I never yeah. thought about that. Yeah. Um. So obviously the things that you implemented into uh, what you do. I mean, you have a lot of new things to implement this year, and you're you, right now you're currently scheduling. Yeah. Okay. So I want to know. Uh, you know, what's the best, you know, what are the best ways for people to uh, kind of get more information about what you do? Well, the best is uh, just Google Santa Kringle, two words, K-R-I-N-G-L-E, yeah. Santa Kringle. And I should pop up one or two on the uh, on the search uh, results. Yeah. Uh, and if you want to put the whole address, it's Santa Kringle LLC. Dot com because yeah. I am a corporation and that's where the LLC came from. And then they can go on there and explore what I do. And of course they can see my pricing. They can click on the book button and they can book uh, their uh, visit. It'll bring them up to a calendar dates and time, pick what's uh, a good date for their family and uh, the child children pick that. And then it will automatically, uh, take them into where they would pay for it. And then after that, it sends them the form and then the form they fill out. And uh, if they can't think of all the things that children, you talk about what children want for Christmas. Yeah. I didn't know what I wanted I for Christmas until the Sears catalog came. Yep. Then we, then it changed. <laughs> and my dad said, do you really want that? Or you just seen that picture? <laughs> I mean, obviously uh, children change their minds and that, but you can always, uh, I meant that form later on or send a text to me and we'll get it up to date, but fill out whatever you feel comfortable sharing with me. And I will relay that in the visit. Yeah. And then, um, and that will make it very special for them. And then at the end of the visit, as we say, I say goodbye. I try to send them a completed uh, version with a beginning, a middle and end. Uh, so you got a nice 28 to 32 minute, video that keepsake keepsake 
that you can download, show to your friends, play on your big 50-inch TV, play on your little phone, your iPad. Yeah. Uh, I, I use Zoom as the, as the medium for me to communicate with a child. It works the best for me right now. And um, I really um, look forward to that. And like I says, I will mail them out the certificate and and the and the little feather, and then the thank you card for that. So it's all part of that experience. It's uh, it's incredible because you were telling me, you know, last year you only had one scene. You had the scene of you in uh, in the workshop, but you know, this year you have all these scenes. So I usually ask people, you know, like what are your goals? But you know, I feel like over this last year, you really have you know, climbed up to your goals and you kind of re restructured your entire business, you know, and, and implemented all these different things. And it's very impressive. And it's, it's very impressive that you do uh, a lot of the work as much as you can yourself. You know, I always respect that. I do all this stuff for this podcast myself. So I know that it takes a lot of time. You know, I know adults, you know, to be an adult is stressful enough and to add all this other stuff to uh, your life is, uh, is always something that, uh, you know, you got to be passionate about it to be sure. able to. Uh, Absolutely. And I'm thinking already, I was shown our, I'm, I belong to the Michigan group of Santas. Uh, I don't know why they just invited me in and I started every Thursday night and uh, being with that's Santa Mel runs that. And, yeah. uh, and we just get all in there and we just talk amongst ourselves and what we're doing and, 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 or we train and different things. But one of those things that we were doing on that, uh, that group was, uh, you know, just the idea of when you get together, you really learn different ideas. And I started showing them what I'm thinking of for next year. And they yeah. said, next year, you didn't even start this year. <laughs> well, I get ideas and, and I, uh, I envisioned that my North Pole scene is I'm going to be sitting with my back facing, the camera and for a little couple seconds there and i'm going to be looking out over the north pole with windmills yeah. that generate electricity ah just to show them that you know this is what powers the north pole different level and, of and it a different level and i think it is you don't really realize how important this is to children of ages they might uh, as they get older, they don't even want a straw anymore from anywhere. They yeah. bring their own straw. Yeah. They they think that way. Uh, and uh, I get a bottle of water in my house, and I fill the thing up over and over again for my refrigerator water. Yeah, it's that one bottle. I just keep refilling it, and um, and the little things like that. And uh, I also might incorporate me mining coal. And people say coal. How does that? Oh, is that something a negative? Well, people don't realize why Santa gave coal. There's two stories around that. One is coal used to warm people's homes, and coal is a sign for Santa when he gives you that, that you your heart needs a little warming. Ah. And that's one way of looking at it. I look at it even more positive than that. I look at that, you take that little piece of coal, you give it to the child, you tell them the story, what that represents, let them put it in their pocket, and have it for their lives. Now, what's that represent? Well, coal is the mother of all diamonds. In other words, a diamond comes from coal. Now, an extreme amount of time and pressure will create that diamond. Well, I, we have to learn how to be more patient, all of us, children and adults, yeah. with people, with ourselves, and not expect everything right away. And for that child to remember that and eventually he'll become or she'll become their own diamond in the rough. And and that's what they are and they'll become and they'll blossom. So they might reach in a pocket and feel that even at 40 years old in the middle of a conference call yeah. and they might need that little inspiration and say, okay, okay, take, you know, take a chill pill a little bit, you know, relax. And so there's all ways to represent something to help a good message and take it a more positive spin on that. Yeah, absolutely. So I was thinking me pushing that card of coal. Yeah. And, and, and incorporate and, and then that. incorporate with the story. And and then may see where that is and, and not use it for of course heating anything anymore. Yeah. Because that's a more of a negative way of uh, looking at that. But Anyway, that's just something I was thinking about. And I was running it by my fellow Santas to get feedback. Yeah, I I mean, I love the idea of being, like I was saying before, I love the idea of being able to customize things and add whatever you want and take out whatever you want. And, you know, just it it, it makes it, it keeps it fun. And in the next movie I might watch, there's one coming out on the 24th. uh, I think it's Child's 
Christmas or something like that. And it, there's a lot of uh, special effects. I want to see those. I uh, might take one little two things like uh, you can't see this because obviously a podcast. Yeah, you'll see you'll see it in the in the photo. I have a I have a, Scott a, Calvin's mug that was given to him by Judy at yeah. the North Pole in the Santa Claus. And what does it say on there? Not too hot. Extra chocolate shaken, not stirred. <laughs> It took me 400 years to get it right. <laughs> I know all the words to it. I yeah. love it. And and anyway, so that to me is shown that part of the movie. Or when I do adults and uh, I give them all oh, this uh, and I give my business oh, card. Yeah. And, and if you look at it, yep. it just says Santa Claus. I said, well, no, read the writing. Yeah. You give it to an adult. They say, what writing? That little red print. Yeah. <laughs> I wish that I could. Uh, I wish I could. uh I wish I could rattle off the whole thing like he did in the yeah. like he did in the Santa Claus. <laughs> anyway, so that's a, a nice little prop. So I take little bits and then of love course that. Uh, with uh, the Christmas Chronicles, I love the uh, halls of letters look, the the video walls, and I I incorporate those. I, I take those liberties. I don't want to ever copy exactly because that's no, their but, work. Yeah, but inspiration, inspiration. That's what it is. Oh, it's I inspiration. Wear the, uh, 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 Miracle 34th, the second one. I, I wear love that, that. That gold ring with the wreath. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. Or I have the actual sp- uh, Christmas spirit watch. Yeah. I have that right on my wrist. The same one that, you know, maybe uh, Kurt Russell used in his movie. I love bringing those different things. Yeah. Me. And adding them together. Like that's the, people love things about every movie and and to have them all together is just like, why not take your favorite thing from all of them and put them together? Yeah. It's the best thing ever. You know, um, uh, how old is Santa? Well, older than my tongue uh, as, and not and younger than my teeth or something like that. You know, that's, something, <laughs> you know, little things that you can say, or you can maybe modernize that. Well, I did your father when he was a child and I did his father when he was a child yeah. and I did that father when he was a child. And so I'm pretty old. And you know, those kind of things that you can add to tools it. to the toolbox. Yeah. That's what it is. Um, well, so for the ending segment that I do with all my guests on the podcast, I kind of throw everyone through a ringer and ask them some desert island questions. If you would be, uh, if you would be interested in playing along with me, sure. Okay, so uh, all right, these are desert island questions. Okay, so desert island questions is whenever I give each guest three categories to take with them on a desert island to ex- to use until. They expire. Uh, so the first thing to take on a desert island, you get three choices, and these are movies. So if you're on a desert island, you're stuck on a desert island for the rest of your life, like Tom Hanks and Castaway, you get three movies to take to watch over and over and over again. What would they be? Wow. They don't uh, even have to be Christmas movies no, or no, anything. No, of course not. Just I mean, favorites. Yeah, favorites. Oh, boy. Uh, there are some movies when they come on, you just don't, Put down the you put down the remote. Yep. Uh, I I love Shawshank Redemption. That's my favorite movie oh, of all time. Oh my goodness! Uh, I love that movie. Um, and then I um, oh I'm trying to think now for it a holiday a holiday movie. Boy, I I like the original Miracle of Thirty Fourth Street. Uh, I Would just, you say that's your favorite Christmas movie? Uh, no, there's too many of them. Yeah, I know. It's there's hard to do. Many. It's hard. They all have their own, but I just really like the way that was done in the message. Uh, and that's right there with a close second with The Wonderful Life. But yeah. um, both uh, Wonderful Life was a sleeper. It didn't really do well in the box office. But uh, you, when they interviewed Jimmy Stewart, it was his favorite movie. Yeah. So that's two of the movies. Uh, um, and then maybe a third movie would probably be... Uh, Boy, uh, uh, boy, you know, I think that it's so hard. You're, this is hard. Two, two other ones I would throw in there, and I, I would, I, I think these should be required watching for children and adults. Uh, remember the Titans. Oh, amazing! Amazing. The story. The remember. Still the amazing. Titans. I get it chills will, watching it. It will hold it. time forever. Yeah, it really. And is. the other one is a simple plan. A simple plan. Oh, you got to watch A Simple Plan. A Simple Plan is with who? Um, uh, Billy Bob Thornton. A Simple Plan. I don't I feel like it sounds familiar. I'm going to have to watch it. Yeah. I'm a big Billy Bob fan. It's it, the premise is they uh two brothers, one that has a little slow Billy Bob and the other brother and another friend found going in the woods, they were looking for something they found a plane, a small plane. 
and in the back of the plane, other than the, the, the decomposed body in the front seat, was a bag full of money. Is this an older movie? Yeah, a little bit older. Not oh, yeah. that old. Not in, not... And, but they wow. had a bag full of money. They realized, and that's the idea of the simple plan. Who knows about it? Why don't we keep it? I will 100% watch and that. And that's, watch how that movie goes. I will definitely watch that. Um, Shawshank, an yeah. amazing movie. Amazing. Yeah, I, it's just an amazing movie. I swear I was thinking about it this morning uh, as I, I think about it very often, actually. It's it's definitely one of them. I'm going to have a, uh, that's one of the pictures that's going to be hanging up on here. Um, okay, so second category, uh, I usually ask people, uh three books that they would take, but I want to change it up a little bit. I'm curious to know of three of, so I, these are a couple different questions. One, what is your favorite cookie? Oh boy. A round one. A ra- <laughs> <laughs> that's what Santa says. That's, that's, so, the, that's the best answer. Yeah. The, a round one, you know, a round one and more than one of them. <laughs> well, what if you had to pick a flavor? Oh, a flavor. I, 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 boy, I love peanut butter, I like chocolate. I like them mixed together and yeah. throw some raspberries in the chocolate. You know, it goes on and I'm on. I'm pretty easy. Yeah. I bake myself. So I'm a baker I, as well. I, 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 I love like it. baking things. And one of my favorite is is uh, a chocolate uh, with raspberry and white chocolate chips. That's amazing. And that's a, I make those in a... Those that's are good stuff. Movies. Okay. Um, now, uh, are, you a, uh, are you an eggnog fan? Uh, I make my own because I can make it a little bit in a lighter. You uh, make eggnog. Yeah. Wow. And then I, I do like it with uh, rum in it. Yeah. Uh, I, I put it in, uh, make a batch for that and without it. And uh, so I do like making my own because it, it's like making your own hot chocolate. It really, uh, the time takes to make it and you can make it. You need to whatever your, your taste exactly. buds are or what your, you know, uh, that what you can allow to eat in a sense, you know, absolutely too much of it. You know? you know what it'll do to you. Yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, and then I would like to know what is your favorite Christmas song? Oh boy. I, I actually like some of Amy Grant stuff. Amy Grant. Amy Grant is, um, um, it's, uh, sings about Mary bring, uh, uh, uh carrying a baby and she's, uh, uh, Oh, I can't think of the breath name. of heaven, breath of heaven. Yes. Breath of heaven. Yeah. Okay. That is one of my favorite of hers, and and uh, and um, and I need a I need a silent night. Oh yeah, that was one of the other favorite. Now the more modern, you know, uh, but I think they uh, really uh, tells it all, and I'm a big fan. Every time she comes to the palace, I yeah. go see her again. Yeah, you know, and I wish she would do more Christmas songs and all of her yeah. hits. But I just love her work. Any singer songwriter. Is my favorite. I'm a Neil Diamond fan. People say, "What's your favorite?" My favorite is Brooklyn Road. Oh yeah, I was thinking about him growing up in Brooklyn. Yeah. yeah, I have a cousin who doesn't like Neil Diamond. I have a cousin who is a musician, Frank Millerelli in the Dirt Nappers. And the Dirt Nappers, uh, and they posted on your uh, Facebook, uh, and they made uh, they about seven albums out, and uh, I love his work, uh, and. Uh, he made now he just made a uh, he used to tell stories to his children in bed and he now made his own children's story and and the album's called we're not kidding around <laughs> i like that and it's out right now on apple podcasts and and i just love the fact that this this older guy my age or a little bit younger than me is making this great music and yeah. with his band, the dirt nappers, you know, I just love, uh, I love anyone that's making, that's doing cool stuff. You yeah. Know, that's the, that's where the check out Frank Millerelli and the dirt nappers, Frank Millerelli and the dirt nappers. Yep. I'll be looking that up for sure. Yeah. Um, okay. Third category is, uh, if you could pick three CDs, you know, you get a, you get a boom box and you're stuck on a desert Island. You only have three CDs to play over and over and over again. A uh, Neil Diamond's Hot August Night. Okay. Uh, um, maybe uh, Harry Chapin. Oh, Harry, okay. Who I love Harry Chapin. Again, yeah. a storyteller. Yeah. And I would probably uh, go with another storyteller. I love them all. It would be uh, Billy Joel. Oh, or, he's coming. Uh, or uh, some of my favorite stuff is some of Cat Stevens, uh, uh, Father and Son, as uh, this hits home. I mean, 
uh, that song. You know, you Billy know? Joel's coming to Pittsburgh. Yeah. I've never seen him. You ever seen him live? I've seen him live. Pretty yes. good? Yep, very good. Yeah, that's that's someone that I would like to cross off my list. I'm, I missed Elton John. I wanted to go and see him too. But I uh, know a friend of mine, we asked him, who was somebody you came that you went to see? And he said the Beatles in Pittsburgh. And I'm thinking, oh, wow, wow, what age was that? Yeah. He was a friend of mine that we, a co-worker. Yeah. And he got to see the Beatles. My dad saw Led Zeppelin in Three Rivers. Wow. You know, it's incredible to think about that, that that's just like, you know, I can't even, I, I, the people that I see now who I think are the equivalent of like, you know, rock stars like Led Zeppelin or people like, you know, artists like Jack White. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, no. but he is a, uh, he was in a band called the White Stripes. You know, they were famous, but, uh, they're from Detroit, but it was like the level that I would equate, you know, seeing a Led Zeppelin to in my age. But uh, I can't even imagine like what it was. He said it was just, you know, chaos back mm -hmm. then. Yeah. But uh, pretty incredible. Um, okay. So the third, the third to last question I ask is something called the death row meal. So the death row meal like that. Uh, so the death row meal is obviously the last meal you would have before, you know, you're sentenced to death. You know, if you look on sometime they got them viral articles, it'll be like, you know, what's, what's the last meal people had before they were sentenced to death. And I always thought it was very fascinating what people said. So what would your appetizer main course and dessert be? Hmm. Oh boy. Um, Hmm. Death meal. Well, I, I try to stay away from eating a lot of meat anymore. I've been trying to eat more, more vegetarian, but I still, when I, uh, a beef stroganoff made with prime rib. Mm. And that's what most of the people who made beef stroganoff in restaurants, it was a leftover prime oh, rib that stroganoff. they used to make that. If you use any kind of meat, you know, ground meat for sure, don't yeah. work. Or if you use any kind of, uh, um, like even drown a uh, chuck roast or something. Yeah. It's not as good as a, a prime rib in that. Yeah. And so I, make that's a good own, meal. Yeah. That that's my main dish. Uh, uh, a good uh, appetizer would be, uh, I love a good shrimp cocktail oh. with my own, making my own shrimp cocktail sauce dessert. I'm a cake maker. Yeah. So, so I, you're pretty active in the kitchen. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm, uh, I, I'm making my own birthday cake. I don't know why. I just like making them. And I don't, uh, I'll probably make, uh, my cake would be black forest cake. Oh, I make wow. A very unique black forest cake. You always been someone that is has been uh, handy in the kitchen? My mom was a baker. She liked baking more than cooking in a sense. Oh, uh, yeah. And and I watched her make those cakes and I, and how she did it. And then, and uh, I took it from there and just started playing around with it. I love making it and, the, and giving them to people. Yeah, how sense. fun is it? Yeah. I, I, in the pandemic, I picked up sourdough making, and uh, I perfected, you know, making sourdough. I'm yeah. not bad at it. Yeah. Uh, but I love baking. It's so fun to do. It's a little science project. That's yeah. what it feels yeah. like. Exactly. I love cooking, too, though. I'm a big cooker. I like grilling. I like all of it. I just love food. And my idea of a great cake is just a batter. Yeah, I Forget don't get the icing. I don't need a crazy icing at all. I, I'm not. A, I understand fondant and what you can do with it. I, I hate get that, it, but they don't realize that is it the don't most, taste good yeah, to me. Absolutely, it does but not taste. good. I'll go and taste the batter. Yeah, that's the, and the batter got to be moist and yeah. unique. And that's what I like. I made a uh, I made a poke cake. You familiar with a poke oh, cake? Oh yeah. So I made one the other day, and it was my first time ever making it. I'm real into doing things myself, uh, and I I was blown away by it. Perfect. The icing that I made, it was perfect. It wasn't too sweet. Everything was so well rounded on it, and it's great to be able to make something delicious. My wife uh, makes a great zucchini bread, oh. and I know I love it. Do you and, like hot foods? Uh, Are you a hot sauce fan? I, I do like spicier foods. Yeah, okay. I do. Uh, but anyway, that uh, zucchini cake, I asked her if I could try to turn into what the carrot cake looks like. I yeah. do all my cakes in five layers or four layers. Oh, wow. So she made the batch of the, the up and I made it into my 10 inch pans. Yeah. And then I had to make a unique icing with a, a little bit of a clove, um, a little bit of a, a cream cheese clove 
flavor to it. And wow, put I love it together. that. And I, I tested it out on, a, on my relatives that were, I had them up for dinner and I gave them the rest of the cake because I don't need it all in my house. <laughs> I know. And they were ecstatic with it. So I know it was a home run. That's but the I just best. wanted to make something unique. And uh, most people would say a zucchini cake, but I think it just works. Yeah, zucchini, I, I, it's, it is. It's really great. Um, okay, so that's a good answer. That's a good meal, good <laughs> balanced meal for sure. Um, okay. So the second to last question that I ask everyone is a very telling question. Uh, if you are getting ready to go on a, uh, if you're getting ready on Christmas Eve to go, you know, all around and, uh, give out candy to all these people and you're stopping to get a uh, snack for the road at a gas station, you can only have one snack. What would it be? What's your go-to? Um, I love kind bars. Oh, I love a kind bar. Yeah, that's, that's great. That. Okay, that's a good one. Um, And the last question that I ask everyone is if you could have a conversation with anyone alive or dead, who would it be and why? Oh, boy. And I'm going to tell you, you could pick a loved one. Like, obviously, people would say, you know, mother or father, grandparent. Yeah. But I I would love to know your answer of someone that is is not a loved one, not a family member or anything like that. Sure. Uh, Boy, um... Oh boy, I I would probably like to have uh, uh, of uh, maybe had a, a conversation with. Uh, boy, there's so many. I know it's it, it's a it's a great it, question to ask yeah, people. Uh, you know, uh, since I do a lot of uh, respect to the gentleman Fred Rogers, that would be interesting person to talk to. Um, but um, uh, I, I also would love to have uh, sat down and talked to still, uh, Steve Jobs. Yeah, uh, and understood what you know and, and what his his thoughts and the way he looked at things. To be fair, though, I think I would choose Fred Rogers over Steve Jobs because I don't think that that conversation with Steve Jobs would be what you would hope it would yeah. be. And I, I find that with Gene Roddenberry. Yeah, it, my wife thought he was a little bit different, and I know he was in between. Uh, the, the the series and making his first yeah. movie coming out and 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 it just was wondering why he's doing these little small events yeah but, but I, it's understandable to know that, like I I I tend to try to see it from people's other point of view and uh, you know I feel like Steve Jobs probably yeah. wouldn't really care would and the other one would be Harry Chapin I feel like that would be a good one too yeah. That would be a good one. Those are good answers. Yeah. That's uh those are really great answers. Um, Greg, I could not thank you enough for coming to talk to me about what you do. I love it. You know, I am a, uh, a big fan of everything you do. Can you please take a second again and tell people where they could find out about what you do and where they could reach you and book you and uh, all the goods like that? Well, it's Santa Kringle LLC.com and that's Santa Kringle with a K and you can just type in Santa and Kringle and Google and you'll find me. And then uh, just click on my website. You'll find everything on there and uh, you can chat with me or send me a text or any question you have. And it's all about the children. That's why I try to make a very, very unique thing. And think about it. We're at a period of time right now where you're not so sure the gift that the child might want can even be available let alone sometimes you have to worry about budgets. Now, there's a cost obviously associated with what I do, but I'm thinking something that becomes a traditional for your family, that you get to spend some time with the children and a character like Santa and then have a video of that so you can always have to look back at and make it maybe part of your Christmas tradition. I think that's the best way you get a hold of me is santakringlellc.com. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Uh, Another thing that I wanted to just touch on one last time before we end is uh, holidays are coming up. And I know that everyone is out there uh, trying to get their gift giving done or their gift buying. And I just want to urge you all again to please step away from Amazon and exercise your uh, duties as a community member. Please go to local businesses and uh, try to source any of your gifts from there. If, uh, if, 
you know, if a hundred people decide to buy one less gift on Amazon and go and just buy at a local business around the city, we could incorporate that money back into our community, uh, give some people a, uh, a nice gift from a local establishment and, uh, you know, spread the love all the way around. But I appreciate everyone listening as usual. I'll call you right back. <laughs>